To thee we come, O Lord our God. unto God, let us now recite together the second form of the act of confession. I confess to Almighty God, one in the Holy Trinity, in the presence of the Blessed Virgin Mary, all the saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, that I have sinned in thought, word, and deed, by my fault, by my fault, by my own great fault. I ask the Blessed Mother Mary, all the saints and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. May the Almighty and merciful Lord grant us pardon, absolution, and remission of our sins. Amen. May our Lord Jesus Christ absolve you, and with his authority vested in me by him, I absolve you from all your sins, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. O God, you will again renew us. Show us your mercy, Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Take our sins away from us, Lord so that we may enter the Holy of Holies with purified hearts through Christ our Lord. Amen. Sing joyfully to the Lord all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before him with joyful song. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Christ have mercy. Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. Glory to God in the highest and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, Holy Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, your Son offers us 
the gift of eternal life. Yet at times we cannot fully perceive his teaching. Give us the conviction to accept him completely and follow him faithfully. Through Christ Jesus our Lord. Let us pray, Almighty and Eternal God, keep in your tender care the youth of your Holy Church, that they may understand those things which are in harmony with your Holy Will. Create in them a spirit of true happiness in your service, that they may be followers of your Holy Word, now and in the days to who come. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you, and the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. The first reading for today, the 21st Sunday in the Ordinary Time, is taken from the book of Joshua. Joshua gathered together all the tribes of Israel at Shechem, summoning their elders, their leaders, their judges, and their officers. When they stood in ranks before God, Joshua addressed all the people. If it does not please you to serve the Lord, decide today whom you will serve. The God of your fathers, serve me on the river, or the gods of the Amorites in whose country you are now dwelling. As for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. But the people answered, Far be it from us to forsake the Lord for the service of other gods. For it was the Lord our God who brought us and our fathers up out of the land of Egypt, out of a state of slavery. He performed those great miracles before our very eyes and protected us along our entire journey and among the peoples through whom we passed. Therefore, we will also serve the Lord, for he is our God, the word of the Lord. The response this morning is taste and see the goodness of the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall be ever in my mouth. Let my soul glory in the Lord. The lowly will hear me and be glad. The Lord has eyes for the just and ears for their cry. The Lord confronts the evildoers to destroy remembrance of them from the earth. When the just cry out, the Lord hears them, and from all their distress, he rescues them. The Lord is close to the brokenhearted, and those who are crushed in spirit, he saves. Many are the trouble, troubles of the just one, but out of them all the Lord delivers him. He watches over all his bones, not one of them shall be broken. The second reading for today is taken from the letter of St. Paul the Apostle to the Ephesians. Brothers and sisters, be subordinate to one another out of reverence for Christ. Subordinate to their husbands as to the Lord, for the husband is the head of his wife, just as Christ is head of the church, he himself the Savior of the body. As the church is subordinate to Christ, so wives should be subordinate to their husbands in everything. Husbands, love your wives, even as Christ loved the church and handed himself 
over for her to sanctify her, cleansing her by the bath of water with the word, that he might present to himself the church in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing, that she might be holy and without blemish. So also husbands should love their wives as their own bodies. He who loves his wife loves himself. For no one hates his own flesh, but rather nourishes and cher cherishes it, even as Christ does the church, because we are members of his body. For this reason a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and the two shall become one flesh. This is a great mystery, but I speak in reverence to Christ and the church. The word of the Lord. What is the Almighty that we should serve Him? And what gain shall we have if we pray to Him? Alleluia, Alleluia. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will my servant be. Almighty and eternal God, who cleanse the lips of the prophet Isaiah with a burning coal, cleanse my heart and my lips through your gracious mercy, that I may worthily proclaim your holy gospel through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the Lord be in my heart and on my lips, that I may worthily proclaim his holy gospel. Amen. The Lord be with you. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. John. Many of Jesus' disciples who were listening said, This saying is hard. Who can accept it? Since Jesus knew that his disciples were murmuring about this, he said to them, does this shock you? What if you were to see the Son of Man ascending to where he was before? It is the Spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. But there are some of you who do not believe. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe, and the one who would betray him. And he said, For this reason I have told you that no man, that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. As a result of this, many of his disciples returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied him. Jesus then said to the twelve, do you also want to leave? Simon Peter answered, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
praised by all of us now and forevermore. Amen. I'm going to add to my vestments today. This was something that was given to me yesterday by the Tibetan community. We hosted the first International Shugden Awareness Day. And this prayer shawl is out of their respect for being able to use our church and also to share with people from the community and parishioners of our church. Jesus knew from the beginning the ones who would not believe and the one who would betray him. And he said, for this reason I have told you that no one can come to me unless it is granted him by my Father. These words are taken from the Gospel according to St. John. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My dear brothers and sisters, today's Gospel reminds us that not everyone accepted the Lord. Either they were unable or incapable of understanding the words that he spoke, and I am sure that there were many who heard his words but placed the emphasis of their lives on the physical. It reminds me of the parable of the sower, for Jesus explained in his story that the seeds that were sown were the words of God. Jesus also explains that only some of the seeds found good soil and germinated. My brothers and sisters, one cannot find God in their lives unless they ask the Lord to be in their lives. No one can find God unless they seek God in their lives. There were many who, as in today's gospel, returned to their former way of life and no longer accompanied Jesus. I think one of the main passages in today's gospel is when Jesus told his disciples that no one can come to him, Jesus, unless God directs that individual to his son. And what is the catalyst by which God directs an individual to his son? I think that being righteous paves the way for that person to be led unto God. What exactly is being righteous. Yesterday, as I mentioned, we held the first International Shooting Awareness Day here at Holy Name of Jesus. There was so much love and fellowship with those who attended. The food was incredible, and the concert was unbelievable. I had the honor and the privilege to offer some closing remarks. I spoke about how Siddhartha Gautama, who became the Buddha at age 29, outlined the way to find truth and freedom to the people that were in his attendance. In one of the most central teachings of all Buddhism, given by Siddhartha Gautama, was what was known as the Noble Eightfold Path. He taught that for one to know the truth and to be righteous unto the Creator is to have right belief, right intent, right speech, right behavior, 
right livelihood, right effort, right contemplation, and right concent concentration to be able to know the truth which will free one from suffering and pain. The entire message of Jesus was to show man the way in which man could free himself from pain and suffering. For he spoke in today's gospel, it is the spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. The words I have spoken to you are spirit and life. And as we read in today's gospel, there were some who did not believe, and they left being disciples of Jesus to go to their former way of life. My dear brothers and sisters, we are all searching for truth and for happiness in our lives and for the path that I have chosen, of which you have chosen, is to hear, to trust, and to believe in the words that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ gives unto us as we hear the words of the good news. Jesus must have been saddened where people turned their back and left him. And it must have bothered him to the point where he said to the twelve, Do you also want to leave? Simon Peter, the outspoken one, answered him and said, Master, to whom shall we go? You have the words of eternal life. We have come to believe and are convinced that you are the Holy One of God. Jesus asks us today, will you also leave me? Will you turn your back from what I am trying to teach you? Or will you try to follow the words that I say unto you? That will, as Jesus said, you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. May we all be like Simon Peter, who answered him and said, Master, to whom shall we go? For you have the words of eternal life. Eternal life, my brothers and sisters, is the truth, and it is the way in which we understand, as Jesus said, we are in the world, but we are not of the world, because there is something more to us than that which is flesh. For Jesus said, it is the spirit that gives life, while the flesh is of no avail. And the words that Jesus spoke were words of spirit and eternal life. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Pilate. 
he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in fulfillment of the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, with the Father and the Son, he is worshipped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. The Lord your God shall you fear. Him shall you serve, and by his name shall you swear. and sisters that our gifts of love and sacrifice may truly be accepted by God, our Heavenly Father. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, may this spotless sacrifice fill our hearts with faith and allow us to partake of your spirit and life. Through Christ our Lord, we pray this day. Amen. Let us pray, Heavenly Father. May your grace and love flow into us by this holy offering. And may the youth of our Polish National Catholic Church continue to live in you as you live in us. We ask this through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God. 
forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Thanks unto the Lord our God. <clears throat> Father, O powerful and ever living God, we do well always and everywhere to give you thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. Through his cross and resurrection, he freed us from sin and death and called us to the glory that he has made us a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a people set apart. Everywhere we proclaim your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. Therefore, with the angels and archangels, with all the saints and the entire church, we lift our hymn of praise to your glory, repeating very humbly. Giving thanks to you. He blessed it, 
broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which is given for you. In like manner, after supper, taking this excellent chalice into his holy and venerable hands, again giving thanks to you. He blessed it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant, which shall be shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. As often as you do this, do it in remembrance of me. Therefore, in remembrance of this Christ, your Son, our Lord, and his blessed passion, resurrection, and his glorious ascension, we, your servants and faithful people, offer to your divine majesty from your own gifts and presence a pure offering, an immaculate offering, the Holy, the holy Bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to regard these offerings with favor and joy and accept them as you receive the gifts of your just servant Abel the sacrifice of our patriarch Abraham, and that which your high priest Melchizedek offered you a holy sacrifice and immaculate host. We humbly ask you, Almighty God, command that this offering be brought by the hands of your holy angel to your high altar into the presence of your divine majesty, that we who receive the most sacred body and blood of your Son from this altar may be filled with every blessing and grace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. Lord, remember your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and sleep in peace. To these souls, Lord, and all the rest in Christ, grant we pray a place of refreshment, light, and peace through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. And grant us your sinful servants who hope in the greatness of your mercy, so part in fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, and all your saints who shed their blood for your name, their hearts were always open to justice and mercy, and with lives patterned after their divine master, merited eternal joy, numbers in their company, Lord, not weighing our merits, but pardoning our offenses, through Christ our Lord, amen, by whom you always create, sanctify, revive, bless, and freely give us all these good things. Through him, with him, in him. All honor and glory are yours, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. Let us pray. Instructed by our Savior's teaching, out and following divine example, we say with confidence, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The
past, present, and future, and by the intercession of the blessed and glorious Mother of God, Mary, together with your blessed apostles, Peter and Paul, as also Andrew, and all the saints, grant us peace in our day. Supported by the help of your mercy, may we be free from sin and secure from all disturbance through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit. Forever and ever. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. May this commingling and consecration of the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ help us who receive it in everlasting life. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, we said to your apostles, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Do not look at our sins but on the faith of your church and grant us the peace and unity of your kingdom for you live and reign forever and ever. Amen. Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, by the will of the Father and the work of the Holy Spirit, your death brought life to the world. By your holy body and blood, free us from all our sins and from every evil. Keep us faithful to your teaching and never let us be parted from you who lives and reigns God forever and ever. Amen. May the partaking of your body and blood, Lord Jesus, not be cause for our judgment or condemnation. Though we are unworthy to receive this great sacrament, through your loving kindness may become our safeguard and healing remedy, our saving master. Awaken in us a living faith, fervent love, worship, adoration, and a holy longing. Through this communion, make us your willing servant. Servants, zealous to fulfill your holy will, May it at last unite us entirely with you, our Lord and our God. Grant this who lives and reigns with God the Father in unity with the Holy Spirit forever and ever. Amen. I will take the heavenly bread and I will call upon the name of the Lord. Lord, I am not worthy that you should come into my heart, but only say the word and I shall be healed. May the body of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. What shall I return unto the Lord for all the graces he hath rendered unto me? I will take the chalice of salvation and I will call upon the name of the Lord with high praise while I call upon him and I shall be saved from all my enemies. May the blood of our Lord Jesus Christ preserve my soul unto life everlasting. Amen. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Lord.
Christ. Amen. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Amen. Receive the body and the blood of Christ. Son, 
who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Sacrifices are offered. May the tribute of our worship be pleasing to you, most holy Trinity. Grant that the sacrifice which we, the one worthy, have offered up into the sight of your majesty be acceptable to you. Through your mercy may it be effective for ourselves and for all those for whom we have offered it through Christ our Lord, amen. May the almighty and merciful God bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Go in peace and serve God. Thanks be to God. I bring to mind that on Saturday we will continue with work projects around the church. Wayne, I want to thank you for coming yesterday and, and helping with uh, trimming the hedges. I, um, I went out yesterday to, to try to mow the, uh, the lawn, but found out that um, we found out that there was a flat tire. So that is going in tomorrow. We had the chance, we took the wheel off. So that would be one of the first things I will do tomorrow, is to take care of getting that flat fixed. I bring to mind next Sunday, Holy Mass, 9 o'clock. Also, we will begin with our fellowship. And also, being the first Sunday of the month, we will be going back on the first Sunday of the month for the monthly meeting of the Ladies' Adoration of the Most Blessed Sacrament. As you received the, the bulletin, that there is much thanks and appreciation for all the gifts and the love and the donations and, and the people who worked to make last week's chicken barbecue successful. People asked me, Father, say a prayer that we have good weather. And I would say to the people, also pray for good weather. And I don't think that it was a coincidence, but I think that the power of prayer does work if we truly believe and we search the Lord. I apologize. I found that um, the, the list that I was given, that it is not only Father who forgets, but um, I tried to make corrections, and there will also be uh, corrections and additions in next week's bulletin. But again, I want to thank all who gave from their heart of their monies, their time, and their energy. I, um, I want to bring to mind that yesterday, as I mentioned, it was the first International Shugden Awareness Day. We had a beautiful time. I know those of our parish who attended, I think they really appreciated not only the food, but Mark, I don't know whether or not that hot sauce has kind of worked through yet. Uh, 
They also have uh, stuffed dumplings, and we were joking around. I was trying to figure out, and I, I said we need to get together to see if we can actually make Tibetan pierogi. Uh, it, it was it was quite quite the thing, and um, again, the um, the entire concert, which lasted almost two hours, so many different performers, and one person in particular, and you know who I was going to refer to. Every single time he left the sanctuary to go into the sacristy, he came out with another instrument. And so a very, very, very gifted individual, Pempa staring. And there was also two young girls who, who gave almost a 45 minute spot of their songs. And, and it was, like I said, it was a time in which we all gathered together and there was a lot of love and fellowship. I ask that you remember in prayer, as we conclude this morning's Mass, to pray for the repose of the soul of John McCain. John was quite an individual who spent many years at the Hanoi Hilton as a prisoner of war, where he was tortured, but yet he came out of that and he became a statesman. There are many people who are politicians and there are very few statesmen. And John McCain, in my opinion, was one of the best. And so let us pray for not only John, but also for the living, for our church, for our people, for those whom we know are sick, and for all the intentions that we may have, that the good Lord continues to hear our prayer and continues to bless us. May God be with all of us. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. And for the repose of the soul of John McCain, as well as for all our faithful departed, eternal rest grant unto their souls, O Lord. May they all rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank you.